Hey, 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 my Aquarian Collective, Sun, Moon, Rising Signs, welcome to your What Do I Need read for this new moon in Aries to full moon next in Libra, March into April 2020. I am your reader, Mark Angelo Lyons Mel for short, professional witch, professional intuitive, and very, very happy uh, to be hanging out with you uh, for this uh, time together. <coughs> Uh, if you are new to my channel, please do like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Comment below as well if any of this makes sense to you or in retrospect, you know, in a week or so, look back and let me know. Because otherwise it's like being dropped down in the middle of a movie, seeing a couple of scenes, and then being whipped out before you see how things go and end up, right? So I do appreciate when people leave comments. And uh, I may not always verbally reply, but... If you get a thumbs up and a heart at the same time, that's me. <laughs> cool, cool. Uh, let's get down to business. We're looking at uh, what do I need, Read. It's a seven card draw. We're just pulling one card from seven different decks that I use. All the decks that I use are in the description box below at the very bottom. And there's some other cool stuff on the way down as you scroll. If you're so interested, click, click, click away. Uh, but otherwise, we're looking at the new moon in Aries. On a Tuesday, that is such an astrological lineup that it's on a Tuesday, because Tuesday is ruled by Mars, as is Aries. First sign of the zodiac on a new moon, that's a lot of initiatory energy. In other words, perfect time to initiate anything, but also because of the first house properties of self-personality and the ego, uh, anything you want to do for yourself, self-healing, self-love, any kind of magic you want to do for yourself in any area of your life. It's really, really a great day for that. And it is so rare, right? You got a one out of a seven chance of getting a new moon in Aries on a Tuesday. A new moon in Aries always comes in March, right? You got one of them a year, pretty much. You with me? Cool. So uh, please keep in mind, this is a general read. It's not going to resonate for everybody. Some of these readings have been really delightful. They've all made sense, but a couple of them have been a little rough. So really focus on your breath, stay in the present moment so you can tune to what your body and your energy is saying about the reading more than just the reaction of the mind, right? Particularly air signs, uh, because I don't think this is mine, but breathe and feel it in your body, right? That's what kind of tells you intuitively what's going on, whether it is your read or not, or if what is coming through resonates. Um, also, in particular, then check your other signs. That's why I do sun, moon, rising signs. And these are about, they're running about eh, between 25 and 30 minutes. I'm trying to keep them relatively brief, but I have to go where the cards and the guides and the gods lead me. You got it? Cool. Uh, let's get down to business. Nice deep breath, please. Here we go. Uh, we're going to start with the Healing with the Angels Oracle by Doreen Virtue to get your first card down. My angels, there you are. <laughs> Please, one card in clarity for the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising Sign. What do they need for this new moon in Aries to full moon next in Libra, March to April 2020, please. What do they need? What do they need to keep their eye on? What do they need to be aware of? What do they need to deal with or see? This new moon to full moon next, March to April 2020. Great. Got the card of abundance, right? Now, abundance, I know we automatically in the spiritual language connect that to finances, but really the word abundance means extra, right? It's like, since I went shopping before everything changed on planet Earth, I have an abundance of coffee in the house. Why? Because it's what I live on. Mm. Mm. Well, and cat food, not so much for me, but for my boys, you know? So in abundance, yes, certainly it can be about money. It can be about time, right? A lot of us got time on our hands now. You know why, and I'm not saying it on YouTube. So uh, keep that in mind. Abundance, that that's the overarching, if you like, broad strokes of the angels saying that you need to be aware of the abundance that you already have, particularly if your mind is taking over and focusing on what you're lacking or what you're missing out on. Uh, I feel like we're all being redirected to see things differently right now, and I think air signs have an edge on that. Unless, like Aquarians, you're too fixed in your thinking, this is an opportunity for you to say, okay, well, let me see what other kind of abundance do I have? Uh, what else do I have extra of that I can appreciate and treasure? Which is sort of the vibe I'm getting off that card empathically. Cool? 
We're nowhere near done. We've got six more decks to go. We're going to get one uh, from the Daughters of the Moon <clears throat> Tarot. Uh, the voices of the goddesses, the divine feminine, the divine yin, half of the universal uh, energy, right? Masculine, feminine. So, uh, <laughs> someone just sent me a message on YouTube. Love you, Mel. So apparently my readings are connecting with people. Which is why I've been doing this for so long, not just on YouTube, but I started when I was 12. I'm going to be 52. Do the math. I've been reading cards a long time. So uh, let's, let's get up in this gig, shall we? Nice deep breath. Oh, it feels so good to breathe like that. My goddesses, please, one card in clarity for the Aquarian Collective. Sun, moon, rising sign for this new moon in Aries to full moon next in Libra, March to April 2020. Please, what do they need? What do they need to know about? What do they need to be aware of? What do they need to fix their minds on fixed air signs that they are? Nope, that was close, but no cigar. Please put the card in my hand, my goddesses, the divine feminine. What do they need this new moon to full moon next, March to April 2020? You got the Tower card, Kali, the Awakener. Now, I know people are terrified of this card, but, you know, studying Tarot and reading as long as I have, it really can be about enlightenment, right? The Tower, once struck by lightning, is reduced to its foundation so that, so that something new can be rebuilt. Like, for example, a belief system, right? And this is, I've been teaching Tarot for 20 plus years, uh, and I tell my students, it's like, this card is not so horrible, but it's shocking. Like somebody um, who doesn't believe in ghosts, right? And then one day they see one. Well, all those years of not believing in ghosts just eradicated in one instant. Now, they may question their sanity about it, but they can't deny they saw something, right? So it's that sort of abrupt change. Not always from the outside. Sometimes we can have a realization while we're contemplating something that changes the way we look at our own personal histories, right? Or we understand someone is in some sort of pain or suffering and that's why they acted the way they did, right? Oh, they weren't being mean to me. They were in excruciating pain that I had no idea about and I jumped to a conclusion, right? So this can be mental. You're an air sign, it's possible. Can be emotional, can be physical, can be spiritual. But but with this card of abundance, yeah, I mean, I could see how this could relate to people feeling like their financial worlds have been struck by lightning and not in a good way. Um, if that is the case, you're not alone in that. That no, it's probably going to be a lot more people than we will ever truly realize on paper. Um, but let's keep going because uh, 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 the way these cards are blessed, it's to re because I bless the cards. Oh. I did a video called uh, How I Bless the Cards, Clarifying Blessing the Cards, something like that. So that this really is for the guidance and grace for the well-being of all. So it's to, to be uplifting and supporting no matter how rough the cards may come out. Doesn't mean that I water them down intellectually. Um, but I really see the Tower card as a very positive thing in terms of something that was built on a faulty foundation. Even if it wasn't faulty in the, in the beginning, it might be now. Something you've outgrown that in a second is struck by lightning. Now, light is truth, right? So enlightenment is in truthenment. So lightning is truthening, right? Play with those words in your mind because I would rather be struck by lightning of truth than to dwell in an illusion over much. Let's ask the gods, the divine masculine. The other half of that universal energy, you've got yin and yang, masculine, feminine, all that. Let's see what the gods have to say, shall we? Nice deep breath. My gods, please, one card. In clarity for the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising Signs. Please, oh please, oh please, just one card in clarity for them. What do they need for this new moon in Aries to full moon next in Libra? What do they need to be aware of? What do they need to see the abundance in or allow themselves to be struck by lightning so that they see clearly that they're given that bolt of truth? Please, what's going on for them? What do they need this new moon to full moon next? March to April 2020. 
Two major arcana cards, people. You've got the tower and you've got the world. So something is definitely completing in the yang aspect, the masculine aspect. Either something issuing forth from you or something happening in your external world, in your body or your world. Because your body is really external to the truth of who you are. You are the spirit or the soul that dwells within. So here we have the goddess Hermaphrodite, and I'm not making that up. It's the child of Hermes and Aphrodite, and I don't know if you can see. I mean, Juliet Sharman Burke really did her research. A lot of people don't know about Hermaphrodite. They think uh, that's a, a, a common vernacular, or maybe not so common, but a current word. Uh, it's not. It is actually a goddess, uh, a god goddess, actually, both male and female. So we're looking at divine completion here with the sword, the wand, the cup, and the pentacle representing the four elements with the Ouroboros, the snake that swallows its own tail. So uh, an ending, a completion, something being brought full circle. Um, and, and certainly with being struck by lightning with the card of the tower, something has definitely, um, uh, I don't want to say been destroyed and devastated, though that's part of it, but at least dissolved, uh, disintegrated, think integration and disintegration, uh, in order for there to be a completion dealing somehow with abundance. Now, you could say on a global level, because Aquarians, you tend to be very uh, attuned to the world at large, right? Like the internet is a very Aquarian invention, right? It brought the whole world together. There's something humanitarian, egalitarian, very global um, about Aquarians, like friends of the world in that way, that there's a lot of this going on on the planet right now, like a lot of up upset, right? A lot of truth coming in, dissolving illusion, but allowing a cycle to complete for another one to begin. Now, I am just going to quote from Course in Miracles briefly. I'm a, I am a student and a teacher of Course in Miracles. It have been for decades. Uh, and though it uses very Christian terminology, I am not a Christian. I am a pagan. An eclectic witch. Thank you very much. Uh, but the Course in Miracles says there is no crucifixion without resurrection, and we're not talking about just wooden crosses and nails. We're talking about the things that we suffer through, that no one has ever went to ashes without rising from them symbolically, right? So there is erosion, and then there is renewal. There is waning moon, and then there is waxing moon. So though it may seem a bit abrupt and might be hitting many areas of your life or one area in particular that there is an extra something, an abundance of something going on, again, this could be very positive for you, uh, very much something that you want and have been waiting for. Uh, we are really looking here about a completion, not necessarily a death, but midnight that then turns into 1201 of the new day, if you get what I'm saying. Cool? maybe an ushering in of a completion to prepare you. And this feels very satisfying, by the way, just intuitively, empathically, feels intuitive. Now, here's the new deck. It's called Angels, Gods, and Goddesses by Tony Carmine Salerno. Kind of digging it. A little abrupt, some of these cards. They just kind of say it like that. But considering we just did the angels, the goddesses, and the gods, it's kind of fun uh, and interesting to see uh, what these cards have to say. Um, they're not the names of gods, goddesses, or angels, like Archangel Michael or the goddess Diana or, you know, the god Apollo, but they are the god of this, the angel of that, the goddess of that. So by their title, not their name. Let's see what you get. Nice deep breath. <sighs> oh, that was very relaxing. Can I have one more, please? <laughs> My angels, gods, and goddesses, please. One card in clarity for this Aquarian collective. Sun, moon, rising sign. What do they need for this new moon? What do they need to know about this new moon in Aries? To full moon next in Libra. Please, what do they need? What do they need to be aware of? What do they need to focus on? It looks like they need to be aware of an abundance of some kind could be financial. Uh, with a lightning strike of Kali, not the destroyer, but the awakener. It's like, wake up, Pearl! You know, like, snap out of it. That brings them this completion that does feel like something pleasant that they've been waiting for. And I'm not just trying to, 
you know, spoonful of sugar to make the medicine go down here. <laughs> Sorry, to, I'm not really Mary Poppinsing you, just kind of feeling that. So please, uh, these collective pantheons of angels, uh, goddesses, and gods, please, what say you? Now, there are only three suits in this one, angel, god, and goddess, so none of them are all together in one. Let's see who you got. Well, this uh, this deck really likes boobies and heinies. <laughs> I'm going to say that. Angel of expression, speak your truth and express yourself clearly. Check her out. She's just sort of tawny containing all over the place. Millennials have no idea what I'm talking about. Because uh, uh, here you go again on your own. Uh, angel of expression, speak your truth and express yourself clearly. So what if that's what this is? Right? You speak your truth. Lightning is truthening. Truthening is lightning. And bam! And that brings you to a wanted conclusion about something involving abundance, financial, mental, emotional, or otherwise. But with the angel of expression, remember, throat chakra is willpower. Right? You have emotional power, mental power, willpower. Spiritual power, personal power. Every chakra has its own flavor of power. But willpower, will you or won't you, express yourself, speak your truth. With the angel of expression behind you, know that it is time to do that, but it will create instantaneous change, perhaps waking you or someone up out of a dream state. And I don't mean the sleepy kind either, because remember, it's Kali the Awakener. Wake up! Wake up, Pearl! Uh, cool. We got three more cards left. I like card draws. They're easier than spreads in some ways. I can't really prepare for them that much anyway. What hits the table hits the table. So let's ask the higher selves of all involved what they feel, think, perceive that you need uh, from the Whispers of Love Oracle, another deck that I love. By the way, I got the angels, gods, and goddesses as well as the Whispers of Love Oracle uh, from the Magic Moon in Saratoga Springs. If you're ever up there, pop in. It's on, they're on Fila Street, P-H-I-L-A. Uh, and tell them Mark Angelo Lyons, Mal for short, sent you, and you won't get a discount or anything. They're going to go, aw, Mark, we love him. Uh, maybe they'll treat you nice, although they're lovely to everybody. Hey, Veronica, if you're watching, I don't think you're an Aquarius, though, if I remember you're a Taurus, or a, if she's a Leo, and has purple hair, just like me. You can't tell, because I have it back in a ponytail. Or as I like to call it, a Tony pony. <laughs> it's better than a man bun. Breathe. Keep it sunny, keep it funny, keep it gay. Higher selves of all involved, please, one card in clarity for this Aquarian Collective. Sun, moon, rising sign. What do they need for this new moon in Aries to this full moon in Libra? What do they need to know about? What do they need to see? What do they need to speak the truth about? What do they need to express themselves with this abundance in this card of the world in the tower? What do they need, higher selves of all involved, please? This new moon to full moon next, March to April 2020. Ask for help. Maybe that's the expression. Ask for help. I need help, right? Is is so hard for people to say because still, I can't believe in this day people still think it's a sign of weakness to ask for help. Where it, it's not just being like very hallmark hardy to say, no, it takes great strength to ask for help. It actually does because you have to overcome your own ego's resistance to anybody letting you be vulnerable, right? Ask for help. What is it you really need help with? Be willing to allow yourself the support you need. In other words, it takes immense strength to get over the hubris. Hubris is toxic pride. Pride is supposed to be one of the seven deadly sins, and it is in its toxicity. But otherwise, nothing wrong with being proud of your accomplishments, all right? The love that you have in your life. Really, that's more esteem than, than pride. But that's why I use hubris. Hubris, the deadly sin of hubris, right? To, to get over that, to ask for help and say, I don't know, I don't know what to do. And maybe if it's this abundance card, this is about financial help, which I, if it's gonna come to a pleasant conclusion, you might as well ask, you know? That's something my mom, my mom, I love my mom. Up in Saratoga, that's uh, where I, I got these two new decks from. Uh, 
she's always said, well, you just ask for help, right? She, if you need help, let people know. Let me know. I love you, right? But we kind of always want to do it on ourselves. But get when you do something by yourself, you're excluding the divine. What could be more the ego than something excluding the divine? And the ego is not who you are. It's the virus in the program, although I like Matt Kahn's definition of the ego. The ego is an inflamed nervous system that is part of the soul that has forgotten who it is, right? So it needs more love, not less, but it doesn't mean we let it drive the shell. Right? It doesn't mean we let it take control, right? Ask for help. What is it you really need help with? Be willing to allow yourself the support you need. I know, not the easiest thing in the world to do. Let's ask the Ascended Masters through these next two decks. We're going to use the uh, the Love Pack, Baby Love Pack, by Chuck Spizzano. Four suits, the problem, the luck, the healing, and the grace. Let's see what they say you need, shall we? Nice deep breath. Oh, my Ascended Masters, please. One card in clarity for the Aquarian Collective. Sun, Moon, Rising Sign. What do they need for this new moon in Aries to full moon next in Libra, March to April 2020? Please, a piece of the problem, a piece of luck, a piece of grace, or a piece of healing. Oh, I feel you. I feel you when it pokes me in the fingers, that one. That's how I know which one it is. Let's see what you need. Ah, loss. Okay, this makes sense. So look, we are in a time of loss right now. <laughs> Not going to say what's going on on the planet. Don't want to get flagged and demonetized for this video as a result of that. It's not worth it considering everybody knows, right? But of course there is a loss. There is a loss of money. There is a loss of opportunity. There is a loss of all social contact. There's all this loss going on. But let us be clear, this dude has like his heart cut out and it's behind him on the winding road that he has been walking. Everybody deals with loss. And everybody deals with loss differently. But since we're dealing with abundance here that comes with the Tower card that somehow has this lovely tied up card of the world. The world card is so rarely a negative card. It's like all things get balanced. Here you have fire, earth, air, water, spirit, and the balance of divine masculine and divine feminine with this angel of expression. <laughs> to ask for help about loss, and, and look, if, that, if it's not financial, right? But Because it's going to play itself out differently uh, across the quantum field of the Aquarian Collective Sun, Moon, Rising signs, then take the risk and ask for help. Because, look, there are four ego wounds. Abuse, neglect, codependence, and loss. This, I got this from Matt Kahn, a freaking genius. His deck is next, so hang out. You're getting a healing mantra card before we're done. Uh, so maybe you were abused, maybe you weren't. But if you were, of course, we have wounds of abuse. Neglect, it's evil, quieter twin, right? Neglect, maybe you were neglected, maybe you weren't. Codependent, maybe you are codependent, were codependent upon but from your parents, from your friends, from whatever growing up and still going on, or maybe not. But no one gets away without wounds of loss because all that rises falls, and yet there is no loss in unity consciousness, fifth dimensional unity consciousness. There is no loss. We are all one. So it is one of the wounds of the ego that it uses to terrify us. But that's exactly when we need to ask for help. At least start asking for help from the divine. Your angels, your gods, your goddesses, your masters, your higher self, whatever your higher power is, even if it's universe, work through me. I need help. Do it. But then chill. The thing is, if you're going to surrender something to the divine in prayer, don't snatch it back the next second, right? Breathe, be, help someone, someone, even if it's through prayer, right? To, to begin to not compensate from that loss, but get there is no gain without loss and there is no loss without gain. They're opposite sides of the same coin. And everything that's happening right now, and I know it's hard to see, and I know nobody wants to believe it with what's going on on the planet right now, but everything is happening for the growth and evolution of our soul to make us better somehow.
And I think all this introspection that we're going through is making a lot of people pray who may not have prayed before, and those who have been praying all along, it's like become our global superpower. Just saying. Last card down. I have a feeling this is going to turn this fucker around. <laughs> Healing Mantra deck, Matt Kahn. Love him. Love this book. Love this deck. Very helpful for me. One side of the card is the mantra, the other the name of the mantra, but that's the only thing that's written on here. So I will look it up alphabetically in a ye old bookie book to get you the paragraph that he wrote on it that I've always found helpful, even though I've only had this since December when it came out. Nice deep breath. Okay, ha, uh, my Ascended Masters, please. What is the perfect healing mantra for this Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising sign for this new moon in Aries to full moon next in Libra? What do they need? What is the healing mantra they need, considering we've got abundance, and that abundance might be connected to that loss, and that loss of abundance in some way, by being struck by lightning, something out of the blue, Kali the Awakener, but definitely reducing something down to its foundation. And yet that card of the world tends to be a healthy, fulfilling, satisfying completion. With the Angel of Expression, speak your truth and express yourself clearly, uh, <laughs> leading right in to ask for help. What is it that they really need help with? Are they willing to allow themselves the support they need? So please, my Ascended Masters, the perfect mantra for this Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising sign, this new moon to full moon next, March to April 2020. Expanding inner power. I am my most powerful when my creativity is given a voice. Angel of expression, ask for help right? That this, that you have the willpower, the throat chakra power to expand your power and do something here. Uh, oh, and I opened right to it. Yeah. Like there you, we all have so much support from the pantheons of the divine. That's just what I call it. You want to call it the universe, call it whatever you want, but call it, right? Ask for help of the divine, of the universe, of the subatomic particle, of the quantum field, whatever you call it but call it. Uh, I am my most powerful when my creativity is given a voice. When inner power expands, you are able to openly communicate your truths, aspirations, and ideas as a way of circulating the energy that pours in from the cosmos, right? So you talk about it, it stirs that energy up and more starts pouring through you. As energy gets circulated by the sharing of your ideas, the universe is given permission to pour more inspiration, passion, and joy into your energy field. And that's what I feel like this card of the world is, but it's definitely about you expressing yourself. As your inner power expands, creativity becomes the life force of source energy surging through you to inspire the embodiment of your higher self. That's bringing heaven to earth, but through our own nervous systems, right? Being the best that we can be, right? It's a prayer I always make in these readings. May we heal, grow, become the best that we can be and fulfill our role in the divine plan, which is about embodying the higher self. This mantra is ideal for resolving creative blocks, healing traumas, tower card perhaps being a trauma there, and releasing blocks of stagnation, expanding inner power. So in no particular order here, the angels are talking about abundance and the masters in here are talking about loss. So if there is an abundance of loss or a loss of abundance, I get that happening for millions if not billions of people on the planet right now. But with this card of the world from the gods, it's saying that there is a perfect completion, almost like a happy ending that leads to a new beginning here as the result of something sudden, an awakening movement. Perhaps it's an insight or a global thing that's going down or a personal thing that's going down. So can you expand your inner power, uh, allowing your most, uh, being your most powerful when your creativity is given a voice like, but what if I do, did this? What if I could try this? L allowing your creativity to move through you right with the angel of expression speak your truth and express yourself clearly that is in a way asking for help 
Uh, what is it that you really need help with? Be willing to allow yourself the support you need, but you have to ask, even if it's just through prayer. Granted, a tricky read, my Aquarians, but some real guidance and grace in there, and a real clear hint with that card of the world, Hermaphrodite. I swear I did not make up the word. That is a god goddess, if you will, uh, in the Greek pantheon, the child of Hermes and Aphrodite. So um, may the Aquarian collective sun, moon, rising signs be blessed with all that they need this new moon to full moon next to heal, to grow, to become the best that they can be, to heal their loss with abundance, to see the truth and be struck by it for that happy completion and happy new beginning as they ask for help, express their truth clearly and expand their inner power by giving their creativity a voice. May they be so blessed, my angels, my goddesses, my gods, my masters, and the higher selves of all involved for the well-being of all. So mote it be. And so it is. Thank you for watching. If you need help, reach out. I'm here. I will gladly put aside recording to help someone. All you got to do is reach out to me on social media, Facebook, my email, all that info is in the description box below. Um, otherwise, start with prayer and see where you're led from there, which also rhymes, which usually means my gods are working through me, because they always are, right? Wishing you the very best and the very blessed of this uh, new moon in Aries to full moon in Aquarius, my darlings. Hell, farewell, and blessed, blessed be.